Hey guys, so this isn't quite the video I had planned for the 50th anniversary of MASH. Uh, initially, my idea was to do a top 11 MASH episodes list that, uh, you know, was going to be written and scripted and filmed and edited and whatever. Uh, but unfortunately, a few days ago, while I was trying to save the newest version of the script, the program stopped working, and when I did the natural thing, which was to turn it off and turn it back on, the file had somehow become corrupted, and I lost the entire script. And, uh, you know, it's only right now a week until the anniversary, and I don't really have time to rewrite a script that I spent weeks on and put my heart and soul into. So I decided that maybe I'll do that video at some point in the future, but I can't recreate that video right now. You know, my heart just isn't in it because I had already put so much into it, and then to lose it all... And it just wouldn't be the same, so I kind of scrambled for what I was going to do, because I can't let the anniversary go by and not post something. You know, I've been on a hiatus for a while because I have been busy with work, and I need to do something. Like, this is a, a personal thing for me. I have to do this. So I, I spent all of last night sitting here in front of this camera, rambling at the camera about M.A.S.H., about what I like about it, about my history with it, trying to recreate the list from memory, and it just didn't work. So instead, what I'm going to do is this is a video that's going to come to you in two parts. Part one is going to be me explaining my history with the show and how I got into the show, um, and sort of, you know, where my uh, obsession bloomed from. And then part two, as you can see by the large pile of things next to me, I am going to walk you through my, uh, ma my collection of, I'm going to take you on a magical mystery tour of my MASH memorabilia collection. And trust me, uh, this isn't even all the stuff. I have a little bit on the floor because it wouldn't fit on this part of the table. Uh, so anyway, uh, without further ado, let's start the video. So my history with MASH starts back when I was probably a teenager. I want to say, uh, you know, no younger than 13, no older than 15, and I was sitting on the couch next to my dad. And in my house, TV is a big deal. My mom used to joke when we were kids that our lives don't revolve around TV, but that has always been a bold-faced lie. Um, and TV was a very important bonding experience for me and my dad. Um, you know, so many of the shows I like are shows that he likes, uh, Futurama, King of the Hill, The Simpsons, Family Guy, uh, and of course, MASH, even Star Trek is a show, uh, that my dad likes, but MASH was a big one. So I remember, uh, my dad was watching reruns on TV land and this episode came on and I don't remember much about watching the episode the first time, except for the fact that burned into my memory, like an image is um radar is gary berghoff in drag because the episode was mail call again from season four and it was the episode where radar gets that home movie from his mom and uncle ed and you know gary berghoff is there dressed as radar's mom and does that like i love you walter scene and it's so touching and beautiful and it's one of the greatest episodes of the show it was on my list i won't tell you where it was on the list but it was pretty damn close to the top um, and that was the first episode of MASH that I remember watching, and for a while that was it. And then when I was 17, it was early 2014, uh, between January and March, and I know this because I was a senior in high school at the time, and, uh, you know, the fall is when I started college, so I, you know, remember, uh, you know, that I was in high school, and I was just goofing around on Netflix, and I saw 
Robert Altman's 1970 film MASH, and I had only really known about it from the fact that it was a show my dad liked, so I said, oh, I didn't know there was a movie, so I watched it, and I fell in love with it. It was a funny movie, despite all the stuff that kind of doesn't hold up well, and I, you know, Donald Sutherland is great, and it's a fantastic movie. If you really like the show, you probably won't like the movie as much, but it is still a, a fantastic movie for what it is, and I liked it so much that, and I never do this, I watch that movie about three or four times in the same week, and I never watch a movie that I have just seen more than once within that period. Like, I'll rewatch movies over years, like, you know, every couple of years or so, I'll be like, I should rewatch the original trilogy, you know, or I should rewatch Wrath of Khan, but I have never spent a whole week watching the same movie over and over. It was that good. And then I found out it was based on a book. And here's something you have to know about me, that if you haven't figured it out from my videos, when I get into something, I get into it. It becomes an obsession. I have to watch and read and listen to everything. You know, it's why I kind of got into this show, is I did that with Doctor Who and Star Trek. And with MASH, it was no different. So I, I, I took a uh, took the book out from my local library, support your local library folks. And then I started watching reruns of the show on MeTV. Um, and I remember the first episode I watched, I think, was... It was, it was either The Gun or the episode... Um, no, it was Soldier of the Month, and I remember because, like, that was kind of my first exposure to the show. And then uh, I remember because when I eventually, you know, wheeled around back to the beginning, some of the, the last episodes that I watched um, in my initial watch through were the early season four stuff, like uh, Quo Vadis, Captain Chandler and uh, Dear Peggy of Moose and Men, like that sort of like the beginning of the season. So I started mid-season four, and I just continued watching, and I would get DVDs for stuff I missed. Like I went back to the very beginning via DVD because I didn't really want to wait. Uh, and then I had to get a DVD for Goodbye, Farewell, and Amen because they didn't air it. And there was one night where they, um, and I remember this, they aired Fallen Idol right after um, Margaret's Wedding because the Winchester episodes were a two-parter, so they aired the third episode of season six with the finale of season five, and then they aired those episodes together, which was very interesting. But anyway, that is, uh, that is sort of, you know, where I fell in love with Alan Alda as an actor, and he became my favorite actor of all time, and all of that sort of came from uh, just me sort of goofing around on Netflix and watching a movie. So, uh, yeah, that is my uh, first exposure to MASH. That is my history with the show. Uh, and as you can see, based on all this, it led to uh, a lot. Uh, so now is the time that we are going to go through my collection in no particular order of all of the MASH-related items uh, that I have in my personal collection. So we're going to start, because it's the closest thing to me, with this lovely collector's edition set of... Uh, MASH. It is a VHS tape. This was given to me as a birthday present from a very, very dear friend of mine. Um, and it's and it's interesting because they initially, when they bought this for me, they did not know that this was a collection of episodes. They thought this was a copy of the film, the Robert Altman film. And I already owned a copy of that, but I, you know, I saw the box, or I didn't see the box. They told me it was in like a nice clamshell, and I said, you know what, I'm all in on MASH, so I might as well own, um, you know, multiple copies. But as you can see, it is uh, an episode, uh, many episodes of the show, the Army-Navy game Showtime and As You Were, which are from uh, the first two seasons. Um, yeah, although they actually might be all from the first season. Um, I don't remember if As You Were is a season two episode. I know Army-Navy and Showtime are season one. Um, yes, Showtime, I think, was, like, the, the second to last episode of the first season, if I remember correctly. But anyway, what's interesting is that, number one, you know, number one, it's a beautiful tape. Uh, you know, I'm gonna hold it up again just because I love it. And then the back of the box, the box, back of the clamshell, shows, um, not only promotional images of the cast from the first three seasons, but the cast of the whole show, and there's kind of this ugly 50 cent bargain sticker over Winchester, which I've never bothered to take off, but I think I will do that now 
for the camera. Consider it an unboxing. I'm just going to fold it up like this so that you can see. Uh, and it's interesting because none of these episodes feature uh, Winchester or Potter or um, uh, BJ. They, these are all from the first three seasons. First two seasons, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, this is a, an amazing piece to have in my collection um, just because of the novelty of it and the fact that it's these like kind of disparate episodes. They're kind of, it's called leisure time. So it's like, you know, episodes of like leisure. But anyway, that is this. So uh, I think we're going to continue um, with going through uh, the media. So I'm going to move these for the moment and come back to them later. These are the books. We're going to continue with all of the multimedia stuff. So, oh, oh. Uh, I'll edit that out, maybe. Probably not. Um, so next up in the list is this uh, VHS of the Robert Altman film that my brother uh, got me uh, for my birthday a couple years ago. And, you know, it's a beautiful, you know, VHS. I've watched it a few times uh, because it's just, uh, you know, a great movie. And I love that I own it on VHS. I love owning things on obscure, you know, outdated media. Uh, case in point, the vinyl record back there that we'll get to in a minute. Um, so, as you can see, this is like a, a very, like, a special edition, and it's the film that inspired the Emmy series. So that is that. And then we have this, which I got just on a whim on an eBay auction. This is the entirety of season two on a three VHS volume set. And I just, I was on eBay, it was recommended for me, and I just kind of got it because I thought it would be funny, again, to own an obscure, um, you know, medium of MASH. And they're really, like, you know, nice-looking, you know, VHS boxes. Um, you know, they have the episodes, they have, uh, you know... Oh, As You Were is a season three episode, uh, season, no, it is a season two episode. See, I was right. Um, I kind of lost the thing. Um, but yeah, so there's not much to say about this. I, I, you know, I've watched a few of the episodes, but it is kind of inconvenient to have to rewind and fast forward to get to specific episodes. Then we have the first MASH DVD I owned. I think this was on sale on Amazon for like five dollars and i got it this is goodbye farewell and amen it's the special edition so it has the 30th anniversary it has the a and e biography it has uh documentaries promo spots blooper reels uh psas it had that unproduced script that i did a video on a couple years ago um and it just you know it, it's a very interesting um you know dvd set and it was great to own the finale because it really is one of the greatest episodes of the show and then this is the newest addition to the mash collection uh which i bought for the top 11 um episodes video because i intended to rip the footage and use it uh which you know obviously we're not going to do that now unfortunately um, but this was uh this is the 11 season box that i bought this at work i ordered it special and, you know, because I get a discount on stuff, so I've been waiting for months to, to justify buying it, and I finally managed to do it. Um, you know, it, it's funny, because I actually own the entirety of the Brady Bunch in a box set just like this, and I owned it first only because um, I went through a Brady Bunch phase a while ago, uh, which I think I fell out of, unfortunately, which is a shame. That's also a good show. But anyway, this has all 11 seasons. Um, I don't think there are that many bonus features, but it also has a DVD copy of the film, which means I can now watch the film uh, in crisp, uh, you know, HD as opposed to, you know, 30-year-old, you know, magnetic tape. Uh, so after that, I'm just going to oh, transfer this to the floor. Well, not the floor, to the other table over here that I, I can just put stuff on. And next up, I think we're going to talk about the vinyl album. Now, I, I am an insufferable record guy, a vinyl dude. Um, and my, my policy when it comes to owning vinyl records is I only buy things that are inherently meaningful to me. So, um, for example, um, I own a copy of Groucho Marx at the uh, at Carnegie Hall, An Evening with Groucho. I own the Carpenters album Passage, which is a, you know, it's one of like their worst albums, but I love it. And then I own this because I do love the soundtrack to the movie, and I thought it would be a cool thing to own. This is, you know, mint, in, mint condition. It's in uh, it's in a nice packaging. And what's interesting about this is it doesn't feature the actual theme song to MASH. 
uh, you know, the regular Suicide is Painless. It features a version by jazz musician Ahmad Jamal, uh, which you would think would be a, a downside because, you know, the version from the movie is fantastic. But what's interesting is I learned that Ahmad Jamal was a musician that my grandparents had vinyl records of, and I inherited their collection. So when I went through their collection, I saw Ahmad Jamal in it, and I went, oh, the guy who did the MASH theme on the, on the soundtrack. So that is, that is this. Um, I'm going to slide that back here. And then I think it's about time that we talk about, oh, sorry, uh, the elephant in the room. Uh, you know, the, um, the MASH vodka decanter. Now this is, you know, a, a big piece of, you know, memorabilia um, back when MASH was super popular. Um, you know, I got it uh, on eBay a couple years ago because, you know, why would I not want to own this? Um, and I'll show you, I have the box. There was no vodka in it. I've never used it because frankly, I don't know how to wash it and I'm afraid I'm going to damage it. And, you know, I really love it. And as you can see, you know, you're supposed to use it to fill up a, uh, martini glass. And so, um, it's a really cool piece to own. Uh, I'm going to, you know, take it off here. Uh, pass that bottle down here. This guy really needs it. Uh, so, you know, it looks like, you know, the thing they would have the blood in on the show, which, you know, they never had on the show. They never did this on the show. Um, but I think it's a really cool piece nonetheless. And, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of uh, having it. I love it. It's, you know, I fa finally found it at an affordable price. And I'm so happy I was able to snag it because it really is just a great piece to just have. You know, when I have my own place, I'm going to have a whole, like, mash set up, like a whole bookshelf and whatever, and it's going to, this is going to have a prominent place. Now, speaking of that, this isn't, uh, this isn't technically mash related, but I'll be right back because I left it on the other side of the room uh, because it's breakable, and I did not want it to fall over and break, but we are going to talk about it, and I'm also going to put this back on the table now that I can, uh, you know, kind of cover up the decanter again. Uh, this is a martini glass. It is not technically mash related because it's not like branded or anything, but uh, it's, you know, partly because I love mash so much and I have a fondness for apple martinis, thanks more to Scrubs, which was directly influenced by mash. Um, I, uh, this is an, uh, this is something that my mom got me. There was a, like a dollar store going out of business and she saw this there and she bought it for me because, you know, so I'd have a proper martini glass and, you know, it is, you know, something that I do cherish and something that is, you know, a great addition to the collection, which I might use if I ever actually use the decanter. And I use it occasionally, but I, I, you know, typically, uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't really had a martini in a while. I've moved on, um, to, you know, more traditional avenues of, uh, boozing. Uh, just because I don't really, you know, I just kind of burn myself out on it. But we're not here to talk about uh, my drinking habits. That's what an intervention is for. And I'm just putting it over on the other side of the room, uh, laying it on my bed so that uh, it will be safe and not damage and not break because I will knock it over. Um, so now that we've done the uh, videos and that... Uh, it's time to talk about the books, and we're going to start with the closest one that I have here, which is the MASH cookbook written by Jeff Maxwell, who, of course, played uh, Igor, Private Igor Straminsky, the, you know, the chef on MASH. Here he is. Here's Mike Farrell and uh, Alan Alda. And I've actually wanted to do a video on this book for years since I bought it, but I can't because it would require me to be, you know, to, to cook everything in the book or at least cook a recipe per chapter and I just haven't really had the uh the, the time or the effort uh to to do so uh, I apologize yeah sorry I apologize um my computer went into sleep mode I have to make sure it's still recording the uh, audio for this video otherwise we would not be in a good place so yeah so I want to I want to do a video I was going to do a video this year but obviously I, I started a new job last year and uh, I didn't have boundless free time to do it but it's a really you know like I said it's a really interesting book um, and I, I still really want to try one of the recipes maybe I'll just do it for dinner um, for my family and we'll see how it goes, but I do want to eventually talk about it. But in order to do a cooking video, you know, again, I need, I need a lot of time in the kitchen and, you know, doing a, a I'm not 
super great at cooking videos, so I'm going to you know, try to limit uh, doing that. Uh, and so next, we're going to move on to the rest of the books, uh, starting with all of this, which is uh, M.A.S.H., the, no, the original novel. This is not the original copy I read. I told you that was from the library. I bought this later. It's not the same edition. This is a U.K. edition of the book. Um, I had an American version, and, you know, it's the same thing, um, except, you know, it got really you know, it gets really broken up on the uh, 4th of July. Um, no, I kid. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's a great book. This is the book that, you know, kind of started the obsession. I don't think I would have gotten into MASH as much. And I'm pretty sure I also, like, read this book cover to cover, like, four times in school because my English teacher was out sick for uh, a while. And I for kept forgetting to take it out of my bag and switch it with a different book. So I just, you know, read it cover to cover four times. Um, and then we have, uh, the sequels, MASH Goes to Maine, uh, we have MASH Mania, which I have not done a video on, but I do own, so I have, these are the three, uh, this and the, the first book, these are the three that were all written solely by Richard, uh, H Hooker, um, you know, the original writer, not the, the weird spin-off novels, which I also own. I actually could not find two of them, and I, oh, I own them. I don't need to prove to you I own them. I made videos on them. Uh, and they're the two that I don't really like, so I didn't look super hard for them. Uh, because honestly, I don't care that I can't find them because they were terrible books. But we have New you know, Mass Goes to New Orleans. We have Mass Goes to London, which is my favorite. And then Mass Goes to Vegas, which I have not yet done a video on because uh, this, this is the next one. Um, and I haven't read it yet because I've been busy. But uh, tr trust and believe I'm working on it. Um, so, you know, we have those. Uh, and then... We have, uh, these are not really MASH related, these are more tangentially. I also have all three of Alan Alda's books. I have Never Have Your Dog Stopped, his memoir. I also own the audiobook uh, digitally. Uh, fantastic book. Uh, you know, I've said, my, I did a video on it years ago, so I said my piece on it. Um, Things I Overheard While Talking to Myself, it's a book of essays. I love it when writer, oh, and authors uh, do book of essays. Uh, because it's really good. Uh, William Shatner has one coming out that I got an advanced copy of. Uh, ch check that out. It's pretty good. Um, but this is also great. Um, you know, he has this really good piece about uh, how he felt when Princess Diana died because of his experiences with paparazzi as an actor. And it's powerful stuff. Um, I think there's also stuff about, you know, September 11th and, you know, stuff that happened you know, not to him directly, but stuff that impacted him. And then, uh, if I, you know, if I understood you, would I have this look on my face? His most recent book, which uh, is all about the science of communication, his work with the Alda Center, um, and is kind of the precursor to the Clear and Vivid podcast, which I am so behind on. Um, I'm just terrible at keeping up with podcasts, so I start them and then I stop listening for a while, and then I just fall so behind. I only really listen when it's an actor or speaker who I really like. Um, but this is a great book. I love this book. I love all three of those books. Um, and then in keeping with that, uh, you've all seen this before. This is my framed photo of the time I met Alan Alda when he was doing his signing for, um, if I understood you, would I have this look on my face? Uh, they said there were no posed photos. They did not say I couldn't ask my dad to stand off to the side while he signed the book and take a picture of us. So I have photographic proof that I met my hero, Alan Alda, and he was so nice, and I did not shake his hand, but the only reason uh, was because this was uh, pre his um, announcement of his Parkinson's diagnosis. And uh, it just, he looked, I don't know, I don't want to say frail, but like, you know, he was a little, like, kind of shaking. Uh, his hand was a little shaking. And I, I, I didn't want to, uh, you know, overstep. And I didn't want to, you know, in case that was, you know, a problem. So I did not shake his hand. But I, I kind of regret that. But, you know, again, I have the picture that I framed as a joke. And it becomes less and less of a joke with every passing day. Uh, so there is that. So 
Next up, um, we're kind of on the uh, tangential related. So next up is going to be this. This is not uh, this is not an item, right? This is something I made myself. This is a paper a, I wrote in a film history class in college about the New Hollywood era, which was in the seventies, and a, a, a major player of that era was Robert Altman, who made the Mash film. And this is about how the Mash film relates to the New Hollywood era. Um, so it, you know, and I, and I compare it, uh, to Clute, which also starred Donald Sutherland. And so I, I titled it Attention All Personnel, Robert uh, Altman's Mash and New Hollywood. You can see the title, uh, possibly. And then, uh, I didn't have a work cited and I, I there are a lot of quirks to writing a, ter uh, uh, a paper, a film studies paper that I'm not good at because I am a prose writer at heart. So I, um got a B plus uh, on it. As you can see on the back, I got a B plus and you can read my professor's comment if the camera focuses. Let me see if I can make it focus. Um, but yeah, and I'll see if I can make it focus on uh, the title. Uh, but anyway, let me make it focus on me again uh, because the video is all about me. Uh, so that uh, that was something just cool to do in college was I got to write a paper about MASH. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people can say that. Um, and then uh, before we get to the other stuff, because they're more, again, tangential stuff, I do want to talk that the outfit I'm wearing uh, is also part of the collection. I have uh, my dog tags, this shirt that my brother got me a couple years ago for my birthday, uh, as you can see, it says MASH 4077, which I changed. I had like a uh, uh, sort of like beige shirt uh, that matches what they wore on the show, which belonged to my grandfather. But um, I now started wearing this because it's, it's better. I have the BDU jacket. You can't really see it, but I'll try to lift my leg up. I, I'm wearing the pants to be accurate. Um, and then we have, uh, this isn't, now I bought these when I bought the whole outfit, the captain's bars. Now no one in the show actually wore their rank insignia, but I'm a sucker for rank insignia because I'm a Star Trek fan. Um, and it is accurate in the sense that in the Robert Altman film, uh, Hawkeye, uh, the reason Duke doesn't know Hawkeye is the other surgeon is because Hawkeye takes his captain's bars and uses it to replace the zipper on his duffel bag. So uh, this is, you know, just sort of an, you know, it's not accurate, but, you know, it kind of is if you consider uh, that aspect of the film. So uh, that is all that stuff. And as you can see behind me, we have the MASH Life magazine that came out when the movie turned 70 uh, two years ago. I have a second copy of that magazine. Uh, that was uh, given to me by another very dear friend, a different dear friend than who gave me the VHS tape. Um, this was given to me by a dear friend from work um, who, uh, you know, had see I had told them about my YouTube channel. They had seen my videos. They knew that I loved MASH and they bought it for me. And I did not have the heart to tell them that I already owned a copy because when it came out two years ago, that was I was the you know first in line to buy one. Um, but I accepted it anyway. Um, because I'm polite, but I'm happy to have a second copy of it because one, it's slightly different, even though the content is mostly the same. Um, but I'm happy to own another one. We have another MASH magazine at work that I, I don't know if it's the same again, but I, I'm going to check it out and possibly add it to the collection, uh, next week. If we still have it floating around, uh, we might, you know, the date might have, it might've gone out of date. Um, but I'm glad to have a second copy because this one obviously is for the backdrop of the show and this one is for me to read through if I ever get the desire to read through it again. Uh, so we have this and on the subject of magazines we have um, the AARP um, with the AARP um, issue that Alan Alda um, was in um, and actually... I think it's tucked away in the magazine. I have something else that I, I have to show you. But anyway, this had an, older artic an article about Alan Alda. They have a, a, a picture of him in it, I think, in sort of like, uh, uh, yeah, an approximation of Hawkeye's outfit, which is so cool. Um, and, you know, it's just such a really cool thing uh, to own. Uh, this was given to me by my dad because he is a subscriber to uh, AARP magazine. And, of course, the, when this thing came in, the first thing he did was say, Hey, Mike, you want this? So this is a cool this is a cool addition to the collection because, it, you know. Um, but anyway, I told you about this, and I thought I didn't have to show you this. 
because I had the other magazine. But I do, because this was something else uh, that was gifted to me. Is this the only one in there? Yeah. So this was given to me by my dad. This was from last uh, two years ago when um, uh, Alan Alda, I think around the time he did the podcast with uh, Gary... Uh, I don't know if it was Gary Berghoff and uh, everyone. I think it might have been only the one where he did it with uh, Loretta Swit and Mike Farrell. But, you know, they did an interview with Alan Alda in uh, the New York Daily News, and my dad clipped me the page, and it's, again, a really cool addition to the collection. You know, something that is, you know, not just, you know, merchandise. Uh, so next up, I'm going to show you my sort of tangential MASH-related stuff, um... My Jeep cap, which I bought way back in 2014 for my, uh, for the video I did for my first MASH video. And, you know, I wear it like an idiot because uh, I forgot to roll it up. And I'm going to, I'll put it on right now to show you how it's supposed to properly be wear. Now, this is technically inaccurate because Radar had a brown one. But I really like Olive Drab as a color, which is Ironic, considering how much they rail against it on the show, but um, I just like the color. Also, I I, I very uh, much like to kind of match things, so I have a, a green pea coat, which is based on my obsession with Doctor Who, specifically the the season six, uh, you know, when the eleventh Doctor wore the green coat. So anyway, this matches that. Um, but anyway, yeah. So we have my Jeep cap which, you know, was, you know, which is a great item to own. I want to buy a brown one to be accurate to Radar. Um, and then, of course, we have my blue Hawaiian shirt, which I bought because uh, of Hawkeye. And I'm going to uh, switch into it right now so I can show it off. Um, you know, it is, uh, it's made out of like, kind of like a, a, a polyester material. I don't think it, it's not quite the same one that Alan Alda wore on the show, but it is close enough for my tastes. And I, I, I wear this out. Sometimes I, I, I haven't worn it to work, but I've debated wearing it to work because I technically am allowed to wear it, even if it would look kind of silly out in public. And then we have uh, this, which you may remember from my Exorcist video when I, um, I had the parody of Father Mulcahy. It's been a little beat up because it's been a couple of years sitting in a storage room. Um, but this is my Panama hat, which I, uh, you know, oh god, yeah, it's really, <laughs> it's really taken a beating recently. It was uh, crumpled under something when I found it. But anyway, this was my Father Mulcahy hat when I talked about the jocularity. Uh, when I did my Exorcist video, I wore this as part of my Father Mulcahy costume. I've got the cross and the turtleneck hanging around somewhere, but, um, you know, those aren't technically part of the collection, as it were, um, because those are pieces I use for other things. Oh, the cross, not really. But, you know, um, the hat, you know, uh, you know, not technically part of the collection, but still cool. I thought I should talk about it. And then we have another Alan Alda item here which is a playbill for the play Jake's Women, which I've never seen, but, um, because, you know, it was on, it was in the Neil Simon Theater in, what year is this? 1992, June of 92. So I obviously didn't see it because I was not born uh, yet. So, um, but this is something that I think my parents found at a yard sale. I think they found a bunch of playbills and they uh and they took and they bought it obviously for me because it has Alan Alda on the cover and that is all I need to hear uh to be into it so i don't know that actually might for the most part cover it with the exception of one more item and we're going to go uh find it myself i'm going to keep it trained on me so you don't see how messy my bedroom is because i have to shift a lot of stuff around the film we do have Right here, the Peace de Resistance, the first thing I ever won in an eBay auction. And it is the Hardee's uh, MASH Goodbye, Farewell, and Amen poster that I guess they released uh, and gave out when the show was ending. And I hope you can hear me because my microphone is across the room and I just realized that. Uh, but anyway, here it is in all its glory. Um, and this, it, this is a very special part of my collection. It's gotten, as you can see, a little beat up and frayed around the edges because I used fun tack and tape and I probably shouldn't have. But it is such a cool thing. And, and the only reason it's not in the background of my videos is because you wouldn't be able to see it behind everything. So it sits prominently next to my desk 
so I can see it whenever I want because it is legitimately uh, my favorite thing that I think I own mash wise. Um, so yeah, I think uh, we're gonna go back uh, over to. Oh, hold on, hold on. Sorry, let me uh, let me train the camera back on me. We're probably going to uh, you know cut. In between this, but maybe not. So we're going to put the camera back, and then we can... Uh, then I'll do a little wrap-up, and then we can all go home. Uh, this is turning into a long... I, I recorded a, a full 30 minutes of that first half, which I did not expect to do. Um, but yeah, so I think that about brings us to the end, at least from uh, all the stuff I remember that I own, of my MASH, my MASH memorabilia collection... Uh, I don't know if this video was at all interesting, but it was really fun for me to go through and sort of talk about all my MASH stuff. Um, I don't have any other MASH stuff on the shelf, do I? I don't think I do. I shouldn't. Uh, all my MASH stuff is over here. Um, yeah, no. That is, so yeah, that's all of the collection. Um, and, you know, it was really cool going through everything. It was fun going through and finding everything and being like, oh, yeah, I remember that thing. And, you know, that thing I got from, you know, my dad and that thing I bought and the thing, you know, um, and the decanter, obviously, uh, which, you know, one of my favorite items. But, yeah, so I think that about wraps up the magical mystery or the magical mystery tour. I might title the video that. I haven't decided yet. Uh, I do enjoy the pun. Uh, but anyway, yes, that is the end of the tour and the end of the video. Uh, 50 years ago, we were introduced to the majesty that is MASH, uh, even though that's not an entirely accurate sentiment because, obviously, the uh, book came out in 1968 and the movie came out in 1970. But despite the fact that both... Richard Hooker and uh, Robert Altman would probably be disappointed that the most enduring version of the characters came from the show. You can't deny that the most enduring version of the characters came from the television show, uh, because I don't think if it was... I, I think if it wasn't for the show, nobody would really remember M.A.S.H. You'd remember M.A.S.H. in the same way that you remember Brewster McCloud uh, or Robert Altman's other films from the New Hollywood era. Um, but you remember M.A.S.H. because of Alan Alda, because of Gene Reynolds and Burt Metcalf, and Larry Gelbart especially. And uh, I, I just want to say thank you to everyone who worked on the show, even though a lot of them probably will never see this video. Uh, thank you to all the actors who were on the show, and thank you to all the fans who made sure that M.A.S.H. ran for 11 seasons back in the 70s. Uh, 11 years was longer than most shows ever get, and I am so grateful and so enthused that, you know, it, it is still resonating today to the point where, like, you know, to the point where, like, they're still releasing the DVDs. You know, a lot of shows become lost media because the DVDs go out of print. I don't think that will ever happen to MASH, uh, and I'm so happy because it genuinely is my favorite show. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to leave you with a quote from one of the characters in M.A.S.H. that, uh, wasn't a main character on the show, but he certainly was one of the main characters in our hearts, Major Sidney Friedman. Ladies and gentlemen, take my advice. Pull down your pants and slide on the ice. I might have gotten that quote wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, take my advice. Pull down your pants and slide on the ice. <laughs> but yeah, that brings us to the end of this video, and I just want to say before we go, happy 50th birthday, MASH. See you next time. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed that video, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on the channel. And if you'd like, you can also find my videos on any of these fine websites. And if you want to help out the channel, you can support us on Patreon. See you next time.